Do not buy Star Wars Jedi Survivor, or at least do not buy it yet. In this series, we are evaluating games before their release and decided whether it is worth it to be hyped or excited or not. And after they will release, we're gonna check whether our predictions and evaluations was good or not. In this video, we will not be buying Star Wars Jedi Survivor and we'll be evaluating whether it was good or not based on information that we have about the game and also based on information that we had about previous games of the developers and publishers because that information is extremely important and this information is often omitted by the hype. So without further ado, let's just talk about about Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Let's talk about good stuff first. Let's talk about the high part of the game. Let's talk about the things that we know about the game and well, it looks pretty good. Star Wars Jedi Survivor is a sequel to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which was pretty well received and it was pretty amazing game and was really enjoyed by many and me amongst them. Game was a surprising breath of fresh air and it felt good. Story was amazing, gameplay was fun and game looked fantastic. But what about this game? What changed and what upgrade? It, whether it has upgraded or not. Well, according to the information that we have and according to the footage that we've already seen, game has not changed much. And don't, be, don't get me wrong, that's not a bad thing. Gameplay was already pretty good and it seems like it has only improved. Not significantly, but in a good ways. Like, for example, the open world seems to be a bit larger. Or at least that's what the reviewers who had early access to the game actually are saying. The game already had an element of an open world in Jedi Fallen Order, but it seems like in Jedi Survivor it is a bit larger. Which gives a lot of side quest vibes and gives us the ability to play game for a bit longer and be entertained for more. But probably the biggest change in the game is of course in its gameplay and combat. It seems like game is implementing stance system, meaning that you have a multiple different stance, all rather different weapons that you can use in multiple different ways. You have five stances, your regular lightsaber, your dual bladed lightsaber, dual lightsaber, your claymore, something reminiscent to Kylo Ren's sword, and your lightsaber and a blaster. And all of which will give you different types of gameplay uh, and I guess different stances will be effective against different types of enemies as well, which sounds pretty cool. Game also features much significantly expanded cosmetic system. Now you cannot just customize the certain elements of this lightsaber, you can customize all the elements of the lightsaber and mix and match it much more thoroughly. And this is not just limited with the color of the lightsaber, it's limited with each and every element. You have multiple segments of the lightsaber, each of which can be customized separately. You have also full customization of Cal Kestis, your main character, including hairstyles, clothing, and also the robot. I think he's called DB1. I don't remember exactly the name. Probably it's DB1. Also in this game, you kind of have like hub territory. You did have it in the first game and it was just ship, but here you do have a place on the planet which you can kind of customize, which, which is pretty interesting. Game also have a companion system and you actually can have a companions in your missions. I doubt that you will have it in all the missions, but you will have it in some of them. And no, this is not a human companion. This is an AI companion only. And also last but not least, game looks much better. But now let's get to the track record because trailers and journalists are giving us pretty good picture, but, but they rarely give any downsides. So let's just judge according to some track record. Well, game is made by Respawn Entertainment and is published by EA, which should give you a lot of information. First, we should use the first game's launch, Jedi Fallen Order. And many people do not remember it, but many reviewers actually complained about technical issues in the game. So the game was not as smooth as everyone wanted it to be. So that's a thing that you need to remember. Yes, probably developers learned a lot from the first game, but you have to also understand that that this game will be much more demanding. Next thing that we will need to take into account is the track record of the developer, in this case Respawn Entertainment. The Respawn does not have a huge track record, but all the titles that they have are pretty huge. And I'm talking about the previous game, Titanfall series and an Apex Legends. All of those games run incredibly smooth and they were incredibly popular. And they were all received very favorably by the majority of the players and the critics. So this is actually a good sign. But there is always an elephant in the room. And for some reason that elephant is always EA. You have to be very skeptical. Skeptical. Even though EA did not actually ruin the first game with the microtransactions and did not do any season pass and things like that, you actually should be expecting something going bad with the second game. Because now EA knows that first game actually made money and yeah, when they smell money, things can actually go bad. I don't blame them. They are business. They need to make money. But doesn't mean that it's good and I say that it, and I said that they should do it. So be very careful and expect something 
something to smell bad. Overall, let's go to the verdict. Should you buy Jedi Fallen Order or not? First things first, no matter how great game sounds like, no matter how great the developers are, no matter how great the publishers are, you should never, ever pre-order the game. So this goes for this one as well. Do not pre-order Star Wars Jedi Survivor, no matter how great the deal would sound like. Plus, the deal would not sound like great because it costs $70. Second, wait for the reviews. You will never know until the game will be released to the masses whether it is good or not. You don't want to pay full price on the release just to play a broken game and be a better tester. Wait for the reviews. And not just reviews from the big publications, but from the smaller ones as well. From the guys that actually paid their money to get the game. Even though I review games on the channel, I will not be buying this game. At least not in the beginning because I know that games will have a technical issues. So just wait for the full reviews, at least for a week after the game's release. And trust me, I'm pretty sure it will be rigged with a technical box. I'm also pretty sure that games will be fixed pretty quickly as well. But just in case, do not buy it on the release until you will be sure that it is good enough. Plus make sure that the review you are watching is for the platform that you wanna buy the game on. Because on PS5, the game might run amazingly, but it might run like a crap on a PC. Just be sure to do that. And do not buy until you will be sure of all of those things. Well, I hope this helps and let me know in the comments down below what do you think of this series. This is the first video in the series and I want to do this for every major release just to keep you safe. Well, this should be for today. Thank you for being here with me. Like the video if you like it. Subscribe for more videos like this one and I'm gonna see you in the next one. See ya.